Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to my Let's Play modded Minecraft Survivor series. This is Dino, and in the previous episode we were um, exploring and searching for a desert biome and found all kinds of cool stuff along the way. And in this episode we will be doing a number of different things, but in particular well, I'd like to get started on building a barn for all of the creatures we're going to want to start breeding in the near future. So sit back and relax and enjoy. But before we get started, note to self, before recording a YouTube video, please make sure the microphone is not muted. <laughs> oh my god, this is the second time I've done this episode, and the first time the mic somehow got muted and uh, went to start editing stuff and found that there was absolutely no uh, microphone audio, uh, which was really unfortunate and extremely frustrating. But, um, yeah, <laughs> this microphone is, it's a really good microphone, but the mute button actually flashes red when it's muted and solid when it's not. And to me, that seems kind of backwards, so didn't notice. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's go ahead and get started. So one of the things I wanted to show you um, was what I had completed on our storage system and voila there it is so um, obviously got more storage capacity that I'll need to add but I think this is a really great start so what we have here are six of our sorting iron chests pretty much the same ones that we had uh, built and are utilizing over here in our ore processing unit um, and they're all configured for storing certain items and then I've added two Java barrels um, and upgraded those to the sorting equivalents as well thinking that with the quantity of dirt and cobblestone that you typically pick up um, when uh, Minecraft venturing will probably want those to be dedicated so um, that's why I did that but they are the sorting style so they are connected into the same sorting system as the rest of these units so this one um, actually is filtered on dusts, so we've got redstone dust and any other um, ore oriented dusts will go in here um, before they're maybe processed. Down here we are filtering on ingots, so all of our ingots are in here, and you'll notice we've been able to collect quite a few um, ores. They were originally up here, and I just yanked them out of there and put them over here. So. Um, Eventually, I'll want to automate that so that um, as ores gets processed, they'll just automatically get yanked out and plunked into the storage system. So, yeah, we'll definitely want to do that. This chest, we're um, sorting on ores. So, um, basically, when I come back from adventuring and I'm ultra lazy, I will just plop the ores in here and they'll get sorted um, rather than putting them in our ore processing unit over there but that's probably something else I should probably automate is you know I can just plop the orders in here they'll automatically go into this sorting chest here and then um, get pulled out of there into the sorting system and processed so yeah definitely want to do that eventually as well and in this one if you hadn't guessed we've got our logs and planks this one we've got our gems which is pretty cool so any of the gem oriented items based on their ore dictionary name will come in here. So we've got our diamonds and our rubies and sapphires and uh, a peridot. We don't have emeralds yet, but hopefully we will pretty soon. So also um, in the previous episode we had two diamonds. Now you'll see I've got ten. I went on a little mini adventure and hunt for um, more redstone and, and um, hoping to find more diamonds and I was able to find a small cache of diamonds. Actually two small caches I guess. So we've got 10 now. Um, I particularly need diamonds because I'd like to get on to certain things like the enchanting table and all that kind of cool stuff. And then this chest you'll know is unlabeled so I use these item frames to kind of help indicate where things are stored. This one doesn't have an item frame because basically everything that doesn't qualify for one of the sorting chests will just stay in this chest. So obviously it's filling up fast I'll probably want to create some more sorting chests for more of these items but for now um, it is what it is whoa what just happened 
Oh, it must have sorted on me. OK. Um, so yeah, so that's our sorting system. And then um, I, I, let's see what else. Um, I also was going to get another miner, um, one of the helpful villager miners going over there. And uh, um, went over there and realized I'd already um, set two of them in operation. So I thought I only had one, but I must have started a second one and just forgot. So yeah, um, we've got two going on over there. Oh, let me shut the door and I'll go over there and, and show you um, how that's going. So um, yeah, it definitely appears that the, um, the um, villager breeding issue has been resolved in update 118. So that's excellent. Really pleased to see that. And then I think he had indicated that he had improved the AI a little bit as well. And I think that might be true. I'm not completely sure. You'll notice he's heading back to town. Um, he actually did get over here and get started, which was great. Um, but when I came over here to check on him earlier, he actually, oh, Lord, I want to, yeah, he's going back. Okay. Um, he was actually stuck right here. And um, I came in here and looked around a little bit. So let's kind of see how this works. You'll notice he isn't picking up all the ore, which I find a little weird because he's supposed to pick up all the ore, um, but he's not. He's He is picking up some, but not all of it. So here's some coal. And then you come back here to this back area and uh, and there's a whole bunch of ore here too that he hasn't mined out. I find that to be a little weird. But I think what it is, um, and I'll just keep an eye on it to see if that's truly the case, is um, I think he'll just keep mining, but but once his pickaxe is um, breaks, you know, because an iron pickaxe does only lasts so long, then um, then of course he doesn't have any equipment, and he'll head back to his guild house to pick up another pickaxe. Oh, that's really interesting. So there's an open area down here, and he laid down this cobblestone, so which is what he's supposed to do. So he's definitely functioning as intended. Um, let's just go ahead and pick up some of this. This is a huge cache of appetite, which I think is supposed to be pretty big. But so yeah, so I think he was probably back here mining some ores, and then. Um, his pickaxe broke, and then he started heading back to the guild house. And then I'll just stop here. We'll we'll come back and get the rest of this. And then um, he got stuck here at the end, and the reason oh got turned around. It's a bit of a maze down here. <laughs> got turned around again. Is it here? No, it's over here. Huh. Ah, there we go. And he and he got stuck over here, and the reason is because he was two blocks down, and without a pickaxe, he couldn't mine his way out. So he was just kind of wandering back and forth here, and all stuck. So um, I, wow, that was weird. My mouse moved on me without me even moving it. Sorry about that. So I just made this way out, and then he climbed out and went and got his pickaxe, which is pretty awesome. And then he came back here, and it looks like he's gotten started again, or was trying to get started. I don't know what that water's doing there. That's kind of weird. Hmm. So is that just a source block? I'll um, bury that for him. Maybe that'll help, because I don't know what he's doing down there. He can't really do anything that way. So anyway, I'm happy to report that Helpful Villagers is working as intended. That he has made some improvements in 118, and um, that's pretty awesome. So, <clears throat> so probably in the very near future, I'll want to come back and maybe start getting some of the other crafts going. Um, for example, it might not be a bad idea to get a um, one of those fighter class type characters um, configured as well. That way there's somebody in the village that can actually defend the villagers should um, zombies suddenly spawn at night. You'll notice over here I did put some um, lava in our smeltery, so we're good to go there. And I got that lava from this lava pool over here. And
And what I started doing is collecting lava out of here and then just taking it over in buckets over to the smeltery. And I'll probably gather some more down here for other uses because I'm we usually need lava for various different purposes. And then what's left, I'll just um, convert to obsidian and then mine the obsidian out because we'll need obsidian really soon as well. Um, in particular for crafting an enchanting table, but also to um, create our um, nether portal. Wow, that was a fast day. So let's go ahead and sleep again. So, so yeah, um, there's quite a few things that I'd kind of like to gear myself up for crafting here um, in the very, very near future. And um, a couple of those um, I find really, really useful about this spot in the game. And one is the ability to fly. And then another is um, the Ender Book. So obviously the ability to fly is pretty useful. And, you know, when you're doing a lot of adventuring and you're, you know, running off that direction in search of desert biomes, which you still haven't found. So obviously I'm going to be going running maybe in another direction. And I'm kind of in an archipelago out here. So um, not quite sure where I'm going to be able to go. I guess I'll have to head back there and just keep going. Um, but anyway, we need to find a desert biome for multiple purposes, and that's going to require a lot of adventuring. So several things that I'd like to have, the ability to fly, um, an, an ender book, and then also um, um, a backpack. So we have, we know we have the morph mod, I've mentioned that before, and um, really useful mod, love it, that's why it's in the mod pack. And um, I definitely want to take advantage of some of the capabilities of, of morphing. But I don't really want to fly using the morph mod. To me, that seems kind of, I'm not going to call it a cheat, but it's a little too easy to achieve. And, um, and I kind of want to keep the game balance even. You know, I think it just makes the game more fun if things are balanced well. So I'm probably not going to rely on the morph mod um, all that much for flight. Because once you kill something like a bat, which is really easy to kill, um, as soon as you go to the nether, you, you can fly. You can morph into a bat and you can fly. So that seems a little easy to me. Whereas the other capabilities in the mod pack that provide for flight, um, you know, require real crafting, you know, gathering certain um, items and, and crafting them. So, oh, I forgot to turn this off from my test world. Let me do that real quick. There we go. Okay, so I was in the test world actually testing out the flight capabilities to see which one's most appropriate and um, and also to see if I were missing any other um, flight capabilities in the mod pack and there's two of them actually one is provided by the Soulcraft mod and it's basically soul armor and you've got your four different component pieces of of your armor um, suit obviously but you'll notice that each one of these provides um, different capabilities once crafted so the helmet provides speed 2, water breathing, and flight. And the chest plate, speed 2, flight. Speed 2, step assist and flight for your leggings. And then your boots have speed 2, water walking, and flight. And so you'll notice they all have flight. So I'm not completely sure if you have to have all four elements or items of your um, armor to fly, but I suspect you probably do. Um, so. Once we've crafted that, we'll have the ability to fly. But if you look at the crafting items, they are really intensive. Um, this item's not too bad. Each different um, armor piece really is just component pieces of your soul fragments, which we've been collecting. They're, they're, they're not easy to find, but they're not ultra rare. So you can collect them, but you're just going to need lots of them, a whole lot. It's this guy, Concealed Life Force, that's really significantly expensive. And I don't even know how to get this trapped lost soul. We'll have to look into that. But clearly these spawn eggs are going to be a lot of fun. They all require a certain number of items and your soul blocks, which is a bunch more soul fragments. And you need four of them. Um, you need soul fragments in your main ingredient as well. So this is really a lot of work to get so and then that's just this one that's just the helmet and then each of these requires pretty much these concealed life force um, crafting items so that's a lot of work that's gonna be really expensive 
Um, probably worth it, I think, in the long run, but um, more of a mid to late game item, I'm thinking. The Ring of Flight is not cheap, but not quite as expensive, so this is probably what I'll be, be working toward in order to gain the ability to fly. It requires um, a ring, which is just gold. That's not too bad, and a diamond. This magic core, though, it's a little more expensive. It's it's a solid gold block, so you need nine gold, two more diamonds. So you're looking at nine gold, a couple of pieces of redstone, and three diamonds. So that's clearly, that's not cheap, but it's um, more achievable. It's an early to mid game item, I think. I don't think it's going to be that hard. So this is probably what I'll do. So just kind of um, wanted to kind of cover that with you, so that you can become familiar with some of the capabilities of the mod pack. And also what I'm what I'm um, focusing on. The other thing that I wanted to do was um, an Ender Book, and so the Ender Book gives you the ability to um, teleport um, on demand. And it's not cheap; it's very very expensive as well. But I love this mod; it's really really nice. I've played with it in my single player, and um, really really find it to be convenient when out exploring and adventuring and stuff like that because. It kind of takes away a little bit of the stress of getting lost in that you can teleport back to your home base once you've got one of these books. Um, but I think it also helps to speed up the game um, near the middle and, and the end part of the game, which I think when you're just doing a ton of traveling, um, you know, it, it can get a little boring. So I think it really helps to kind of speed the game up a little bit at that point and, you know, keep it a little more interesting. And again, it's not cheap. so. We've got five Ender Books in here, and the normal book requires four Ender Pearls. And, uh, you know, Ender Pearls, um, they're not rare, but they're not cheap either. I mean, it's not like you're going to just have an Enderman freely give you Ender Pearls. You're going to have to go kill a bunch of Endermen. So there's a, quite a bit of work there to get those Ender Pearls. But that's achievable. You can do that. The next book up, though, is an Iron Ender Book. And it basically requires a normal book and four blocks of iron, as well as four more ender pearls. Um, the gold one builds on the previous one, so now you got to have an iron book. So you got to craft an iron book, which we just described, and then four blocks of gold, as well as four ender pearls. So that's really expensive. Oh my God! Diamond, guess what? A gold book, four blocks of diamonds and then your ender pearls and then emeralds same four blocks of emeralds as well as your diamond book so really really expensive but the neat thing about it is that um let me go back over to the page that talks about um this particular mod yeah, because I wanted to kind of um, describe how this works. So the normal book uh, allows for 10 entries in the book, and then each subsequent Ender book um, gives you an additional five entries. So iron is 15, gold is 20, diamond is 25, and emerald is 30. So you can store that many number of warp points in your, your book. And then you need this guy over here in your inventory in order to actually write the entry. So that's how that works. Additionally, for gold and above, so for gold, diamond, and emerald, once you've got that book, then you can actually um, teleport interdimensionally. So you can come to the overworld from the nether and so on and so forth. Pretty, pretty awesome. So definitely want to get working on that. And at a minimum, I'd like to get, obviously, to the gold level because um, it would be nice to be able to travel back and forth from the nether a little quicker. And then, of course, once we started getting into mythcraft, mythcraft worlds and stuff like that, we'll, um, you know, we'll be able to portal in and out of there as well. So something else I want to work on. And then, um, but before I go too much further, I want to be able to craft um, a backpack. So there's a couple of different mods in here. Um, where did I put my leather? Oh, there it is. Okay. So we need leather, we need gold, and what else? Oh, and a piece of wool. There we go. Okay, so those are the crafting items you'll need for the backpack. So we have two different, um, 
maybe even three different um, backpack mods in here that provide additional storage capability when adventuring. You've got your your uh, main backpack mod and then I think yeah and then you've got forestry which gives you some backpacking capabilities but the one that I'm most interested in is the um, better storage backpack this guy right here so let's go ahead and craft him up really fast voila awesome so the reason why I really like this backpack um, is because you can you can just right click and set it down just like a chest and then right click on it and you can open up the backpack and so it's like an iron chest really really awesome well there goes my mouse again I think I have a wireless mouse and I'm wondering if maybe the battery is getting low sorry about that um, but if you write if you shift and punch it when you break it it doesn't go in your inventory it goes on your back look at that how cute is that Woohoo! I got a backpack on my back yay so that's pretty awesome. So the backpack actually does not take a slot, which is really, really convenient. See, it's not taking any slots. So really, really awesome. And the cool thing about that is that you can configure a hotkey, and once you press the hotkey, it opens up your backpack inventory. So you can actually access your backpack without actually having to set it down. It's just always available, always on demand. So in addition to your normal inventory slots, you now have this on-demand backpack capability or capacity. So I love it. I love that mod. That is so super convenient. So awesome. So we've got our backpack and it is on our back and we are good to go adventuring and not have to fill up our inventory slots so quickly. That's just going to be awesome. I mean, ultimately, once we can, you know, it'd be nice to um, craft an ender backpack or an ender pack or whatever they call that. And then you can just put your items in there and then you can have a, an engine over here that just automatically pulls them out of your ender chest. And, you know, so you've got infinite storage that way when you're out adventuring. But that could be a little while before we get there. So, awesome. That's pretty exciting. Let me um, go over to my notes real quick. I just wanted to double check my, my notes. So, oh, I forgot to mention that I also, I, I updated a couple mods, but um, the really exciting thing to me is that we actually, I've actually added computer craft. So computer craft has finally been updated for 1710, and that is awesome. That was one of the key mods, in my opinion, that um, was missing from the mod pack, and it was simply missing because it hadn't been updated to 1710 yet. I mean, it really took them a long time. But it has been updated as of two or three days ago, I believe. And um, and so, yeah, so I was really missing the turtle capability, but now we've got our turtles back. Awesome. So now I can craft a turtle and get them uh, digging these big holes like this basement that I had to do by hand. <laughs> I won't have to do that again. So that's that's exciting. I'm really, I'm really happy to see that. So, um, so what I want to get started on real quick before we get too far along, um, let me double check my notes once again. There we go. Is um, I wanted to start on this barn, and this is a barn I built in one of my single player worlds, and I really, really liked it. Um, it looked pretty nice. It wasn't too hard to build. It was really functional. So I thought what I would do is at least show you how I framed that out, um, and just kind of ask for your opinion on it, and you know, give me your feedback on what you think about it. Um, it's going to be a fairly big building, um, but that's what we're going to need for storing all of our different animals. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, I went off on a little adventure and um, was on the hunt for wool, but in particular for oak blocks. And the reason for that is because um, I really like the look of the oak blocks up against the oak planks. I think um, the two different textures and colors complement each other so nicely. And let me show you what I mean. So there's one side. And let's go ahead and move this out of the way and get some blocks in our inventory. There we go. And put these up here. So, so see, I really like that look. 
the the textures complement each other because they're effectively the same type of texture even though one's sideways one's horizontal and one's perpendicular or, or vertical um, and but yet there are different shades of brown one's a little darker color than up against the lighter color so that you know I just I just like that I think the I think the um, that configuration really complements itself so yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think, or what your preference in um, building these types of build materials um, out of. So obviously, you know, the barn is going to have more of that, um, you know, rustic type look to it. You're not going to want to build a barn necessarily out of metal, unless unless you know, unless your um, unless your um, Minecraft theme um, calls for that, but. In this let's play, you know, we're we're kind of trying to stay natural. We're not going, you know, with an ultra scientific theme or anything like that. So, um, you know, we've got our blacksmith shop over there, for example, in this kind of, you know, cabiny type home base, and now we've got this um, wood oriented barn and stuff like that out here. So, so I I don't know I I like it, but I'd really um, be interested in your your opinions. And, and, you know, and what you may have done in your Let's Plays if you've built, you know, corrals and um, barns and stuff like that. So, yeah, while I was out over there trying to collect um, oak wood because I couldn't find any um, local, I really had to run a number of biomes that direction to, um, to, to get some oak wood. Um, I, I was able to find a zombie spawner right on the surface which is awesome I've only done that once before um, I don't know how um, common that is but uh, but I always get really excited when there's a, um, a you know a spawner so close to the surface because then you can do some really cool builds that can directly incorporate your your you know your mob farm right in in your builds so that was pretty awesome I was really really excited about that and um, once I head back over there, I'll uh, I'll um, show you where it's at and stuff. So let's go ahead and finish this side up real quick. There. And I've got this block I need to finish. Can I do it? Nope. <laughs> I had a feeling these things hate me. Uh, I always have trouble orienting them properly. Try again. Did it work? No. Okay. Um, we won't argue with the wood. It's going to win every time. Okay. There. Now you happy? Okay. So there, so that's the frame for the most part. Let's go ahead and put a few blocks on the sides as well. And I suspect I'm gonna run out of oak wood at that point. We'll see how far we can get. We'll also see if I can actually do this without uh, derping all over the place. Sweet. Oh, one little derp, okay. Better than I thought I would be. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then we just have a few more that I can place over here, and then I'm going to be out of wood. Yep. Okay. So there's your frame. That's kind of the idea. Um, and what, what we're going to do here is this center um, walkway through the center of the barn will be open like that. And then on each side, we'll have kind of a five by five pen for each of our animals, chickens, pigs, cows, so on and forth. And then um, probably the same will be on the other side. And then we'll have the, the center access area. And this will be two story. <clears throat> so the pens will be five by five and three high. One, two, three. So the floor will be at this level right here. And then, um, and then there'll be a second floor up above we probably won't need quite all that room, but I think it'll look nicer that way, a little more authentic. 
and then because you know typically barns have a loft where you store your hay and all that kind of cool stuff so we'll emulate that here I did that in my single player world and it turned out I think pretty nice so I'm not going to finish that now I don't want to bore you to death with um, a tedious build like this and um, besides I ran out of wood <laughs> so I'm going to have to go back over there try to um, find some more oak wood um, I was originally planning on putting the barn over here <clears throat> you can see I started prepping the ground in this area but then I realized how big the building was going to be because it's actually um, 19 lo um, blocks long by 17 wide so it's 19 by 17 and putting that building here 19 by 17 was going to kind of come way over here and I really didn't want it taking so much of that view away from from um, the home base so I think what I'll do instead is I'll probably put um, my stables over here and um, I've got an idea for that build as well based on um, another video that I'd seen in the past but I'll clearly need to go get oak is that, is that oak oh my god that's oak holy holy crud I had some oak right here in my backyard and I didn't even notice I just assumed it was all dark oak yeah see this is dark oak that's dark oak that's dark oak so I thought it was all dark oak but apparently I have a little bit of oak see dark oak dark oak yeah it's mostly dark oak okay okay I don't feel too bad I missed one <laughs> I'll cut you down later. Um, yeah, so that's really about it. Oh, yeah, I was going to mention, too, that um, while I was out looking for um, oak wood and I found that zombie spawner, I also found a second skyblock meteor, which, oh, my God, it is so huge. I mean, up there on the mini-map, I mean, it, it took up, you know, two-thirds of the minimum of the mini-map. It was just this big monster crater that suddenly appeared on the mini-map and I looked up there and I was wondering what that was. So I went over to check it out and it was a huge meteor with a big monster skyblock meteor in the ins on the center. So that reminded me to go check out what that's all about and apparently um, in um, Applied Energistics with um, that meteor I believe comes from that mod and inside the center of that meteor is um, a chest skyblock chest I guess and inside the chest are some some items and I believe they're pretty rare I mean I don't think the skyblock meteors just are everywhere they're, they're kind of a rare find and then of course um, you need a diamond pickaxe to get to the center and get to the chest and then there are some items in there they're somewhat ore but regardless they are required for some additional builds in the applied energistics mod so um, so yeah, so now that I know that, um, I was a little nervous just digging in there hunting for that chest. Um, I wasn't sure what I was looking for. Now I know it's a chest, but additionally, I wasn't sure if I had the right item to mine it out. And I was kind of concerned that if I did it wrong, I might waste or lose that item. So now I know. So now now we can go back um, and uh, dig up that chest and, and check out what cool loots are inside there. So that's pretty exciting. But um, yeah, that's pretty much most of what I wanted to cover in this episode. So I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did a lot of talking and rambling with um, only a little bit of building this time, but I thought it would be um, worthwhile to kind of discuss some of the um, items that I would like to craft and the purpose for doing so and the items that we're going to need to collect in order to do that. Um, and for some of you, if you've never um, seen those items before or played um, the mod that has those items, that might be new and interesting to you. Um, so yeah, so uh, if you'd like to, uh, please do leave a like. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's free and it'll, you'll get notified of the next episodes. And um, thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next time.